biomechanics as opposed to the medical integration. So more of the quote kiosk model and drifting away to the customization and specialization that we would expect from going to a clinician. Uh, so I know that, uh, and I, I wanna be very clear here, there are clearly labs that specialize with the medical clinician, but then there are also ones that are catering more to the masses to make more money because that's yeah. the bigger lever, kind of yeah. the same quandary you posed with the shoes. Yeah. Look, I think, <clears throat> I think that the thing that really surprised me is, Ben, the, the biggest issue we have with athletic footwear across the board is probably fit. So nobody's been able to crack the fit nut um, because you can be a US size nine um, in a shoe, but you might have a foot that is uh, almost circular. So you're not going to fit in the shoe and you have to actually go out and buy a size 12 to be able to get into that shoe. So this is a, a huge issue for the industry full stop. And there's a lot of companies that are trying to understand how you might solve that. Well, the most obvious way to solve that is to 3D print lasts and to have a library. Every company would have a library of lasts, maybe 100 lasts. And then people like you and I have our client come in and say, I can see that you are last number 47. Um, uh, Essex added us Nike, would you kindly build a, uh, a shoe for this individual off uh, last number 47? Look, that technology is right here, right now, right doable, and I don't really understand why that hasn't taken off. Right. You know, uh, what's interesting to me, and I've, I've had a chance to deal with a couple of uh, bike companies that do the, the uh, cleat fit, uh, is that they are, uh, and, they're, and by the way, uh, there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with the traditional fiberglass casting, circumferential uh, tracings, you know, where you're doing, and, and they are very particular. They'll send these specialized kits to the patients that are overwhelming for the patients. So they come to clinicians like me to sort it out. Uh, each of them has their own sort of uh, secret sauce of how they're uh, uh, collecting the metrics. Uh, but to me, what's surprising is that it still hasn't been fully integrated with the 3D side. And, and here we are, so we're having this discussion. I think those uh, conversations, though, will begin to start happening soon. Well, they will. <clears throat> and, the, you know, the, the prime example is, you know, Lululemon, um, with great fanfare, have just brought out a, um, a running shoot for females only. And they did that based on <clears throat> um, reportedly one million scans that were done with a system called Volumental. I'm not sure whether you, you know what Volumental is, but it's... I um, don't, briefly... It's a, it's, a, it's a 3D camera based system. So basically you sit on a platform, there are four cameras in each corner of the platform and they uh, photograph the foot and they're able to build a, a, volume, a volumetric model of your foot. Um, and so those, those machines are in every fleet feet franchise in the USA, all 200, whatever. And they're seeing however many people they do a day. So they've got this massive database of American feet. And, um, uh, Lululemon were able to tap into that database and that's what they used to um, build their last for this, this women's only shoot. The missed opportunity, of course, is if they'd been able to build 10 lasts or 50 lasts or 100 lasts, then it would have, it would have been a, an absolute game changer. But, but still, you know, it's, it's a great idea. And that's the sort of information and the sort of technology that, that we're working with now. But um, I mean, personally, I'm involved right now in trying to develop a fit algorithm for retail to take them beyond where they are now, because <clears throat> the, the really interesting question here, Ben, is, and this is what a lot of people say, they say, well, listen, running shoes have evolved, and they're clearly very different than they were 20 years ago, but injuries haven't changed. Well, I put it to you that it may well be that there's a lot of people who go into a retail store and they get recommended a shoe, maybe for a fit to vertical model. And they put that shoe on and think, geez, it's not very comfortable, but it's been recommended to me. So I better go and buy it. And they walk out of the shoe with a shoe, with, they walk out of the store with a shoe that isn't comfortable, probably isn't right for them, and probably is going to injure them. So the, that interface between the client and technical retail getting the right advice is just so critical, I think, to trying to reduce the injury rate in runners. And it's something that we haven't even scratched the surface of that discussion yet. It's, it, it's just sort of been floating around the ether. But, you know, the, the, the system really should be that what, what I think what often happens is 
they go in there and people say, what are you running in at the moment? Oh, I'm running in a Kano 26. Right, here's the Kano 27, proceed to the cash register. But what they're not understanding is that the Kano 27 could potentially be completely different in all sorts of ways to the Kano 26. And if that particular runner doesn't respond to that shoe, it won't work for them. So what, what really needs to happen is that the runner needs to be given an offering of shoes, three, maybe four shoes, with one obvious outrider. It might be Vibram Five Fingers, who knows? It might be an ultra. It could be something that is just a bit out there. But it may well be that that outrider is actually the one that works for them. But if you don't bring it out and you don't try it, you don't analyse it properly and look at things like the noise filter and the comfort filter and all those sorts of things, then they're going to walk out the store without the right information and potentially the right choice so <clears throat> something that i'm really interested in trying to improve that whole situation you know what i think the real cool thing about you're talking about conceptually here is that for years biomechanics has been behind pharma in getting repeatable masses of data and so we'll have these studies, right, with uh, 23 runners, you know, and we group them into subsets of, you know, 12 of this and 13. And, you know, pharma is re relying on repeated trials with 50, 60,000 people for their heart drugs. So now what you're talking about is this idea that hasn't totally reached the potential that you just mentioned, where we can have all this data and then do the last subsets to uh, address those particular needs. It's a great resource that we've only begun to potentially scratch the surface with, as you mentioned. Yeah, well, the other major difference is that pharma is all about dosage. So, so you couldn't imagine going to your doctor and him saying, well, here's some amoxicillin. How many do I take, doc? I don't know, somewhere between one and 10. You know, it, that, that wouldn't happen. You know, you, you know what you're going to take. You're going to take, take it twice a day with meals that's the dosage because that's linked completely to its efficacy. We don't do that. We don't know where the shoes, how, or if they work or an orthotic device, we don't, we, we don't tie track. We don't that have dosage. that sharp line. Yeah. We don't. And this is where the stuff that Benno is doing is so important because he's doing these very sophisticated cluster analyses and trying to work out where the clusters are. And if you can identify that, then you can work out who responds to what type of intervention, whether it be a shoe or an orthotic. And I think he's getting pretty close to that.